Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips, and you will not believe the first item that I have on my agenda today. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and thank you for being really wonderful people. Look at this headline. I, I, okay, I'll go ahead and read it. Cancer Charity says, Front Hole is more inclusive than cervix. Claims men can have them too. We've reached the point of absurdity, folks. We have absolutely gone off the deep end and our society has gone insane. A cancer organization said that it re recognized readers could be offended by the term cervix. How? And explained, <laughs> I can't, I can't even read this. It's, oh my God. Explained that the term front hole would be more inclusive to men who believe they are women. The Canadian Cancer Society, Canada's most recognizable charity, cancer charity, listed a series of unscientific recommendations on a page about career screen, cancer screenings. I can't even read this thing. It's driving me crazy. The organization asked, as a trans man or non-binary person assigned female at birth, do I need to get screened for cervical cancer? Well, do you have a cervix? Then yes. <laughs> oh my God. What followed was a series of wild assertions that could confuse any well-meaning reader. Unironically placed as a footnote under the heading, Words Matter, the cancer organization seemed to be backtracking from the idea that a cervix could be referred to as a cervix. We recognize that many trans men and non-binary people may have mixed feelings about or feel distanced from words like cervix. Well, if you think you're a woman, then you think you have a cervix, right? I mean, that's what women have. Come on. Oh my God, this, I can't read any more of this. This is insanity. This is, uh, what? Oh, golly days. Oh my God, please deliver me, Lord, from this crazy world. This is insanity. It is absolute insanity. I'm done with that one. I can't handle it anymore. Uh, my next article is Unveiling Big Intel, How the CIA and FBI Became Deep State Villains. And it's a pretty lengthy article, as you can see. I'm just going to read you a little bit of it that I thought was important for you to know. Obviously, you can read the whole thing. I'll put the links in the description for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Therein lies the revelatory and frightening message of Big Intel. While both the FBI and CIA were ostensibly established to protect this country from dangers, foreign and domestic, they were varyingly infected by the Frankfurt School's Marxist academics here in our country. According to Big Intel, the CIA was poisoned from the outset. It took longer for the FBI to catch up because of the unwavering anti communism of its longtime director, J. Edgar Hoover. But get there the FBI did, as Mike details in this thoroughly researched, copiously footnoted, and intriguing page turner. Mike quotes the late Bishop Fulton Sheen in the book's epigraph. It is a characteristic of any decaying civilization that the great masses of the people are unconscious of the tragedy. That is what Big Intel unveils in its pages, how the FBI's and CIA's Marxist infiltrators have nurtured freedom-killing cancers into late-stage sickness 
by a slow and deliberate infections of leftist ideology, ultimately leading these agencies and their agents to prioritize diversity and inclusion, racial equity, critical theory, political correctness, and other noxious ideas over national security and the Constitution. Steeped in extensive histories, Big Intel reveals how we got there, including the backgrounds of many of the heroes and villains in the histories of our intelligence services. Mike says Karl Marx's goat goal, excuse me, Karl Marx's goal was not to improve but destroy family, human relationships, economics, patriotism, loyalty, morals, religion, Western civilization, destruction of the entire human existence. Yes, that was Karl Marx's goal, and he's well on his way to achieving it. In the United States, for crying out loud, and all over the world, I mean, let's face it, every major Western civilization is infected with it. It's absolutely insane. <sighs> now, this next one, I'm not going to play for you. I'm just going to show it on the screen so you can see it. It's an interview with Representative Thomas Massey, and he talks about cowards in Congress and living off the grid. And um, an interesting thing I found out about him in watching this is that he wears on his uh, jacket lapel a, uh, a counter for the national debt that actually is live and, and to the second. And so whenever he has a conversation with someone, of course, they get distracted by those numbers flashing across the screen. You can't see them because they're going so fast. And then they will ask him, what is that? And he says, that's the national debt. And that's how much it's increasing while we stand here and talk. Unfortunately, that seems to have little or no impact on the politicians that we have. So, uh, life goes on, eh? The last item I have is a Prager University video. And again, I'm not going to play this. I'm just going to put the link in the description. It is called Brazil, a cautionary tale. And this gentleman is talking about what happened in Brazil and what he sees happening in the United States right now. And if we don't, if we don't turn things around, folks, if we don't get headed back down the constitutional path, then America's done for. It's that simple. I hate to say that. I really do. But that's the reality of it. And that's the news for today. <laughs> Why is the news always so depressing? Oh, well. One thing I know for sure is that I pray for you and that God will give you grace and peace and love and joy in your life and in the lives of everyone that you're surrounded with. I pray for that for you for every day. And I pray that most of all, you will have peace. This is the Vietnam Era Vet out.